Hello once again, Ohio. <laughs> I'm still getting the intro down. It's not working exactly the way I want yet. So bear with me, even after this many broadcasts. So this is episode number 799, speaking of episodes, yes, one more to 800 tomorrow. And the topic today is part two of a topic, topic, a topic I started yesterday, which is about ball busting. And this is another reason why you might be a ball buster in love and life. And this is for the ladies, you might have guessed. Uh, yesterday was a talk for the ladies and for the men about how to be in response to that. This is actually more specifically for the women, although men may want to watch this too. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Before I jump into the topic and explain what I mean and give you all these different tips, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I do these talks every day. My name is Barry Selby, in case you haven't figured that out already. I am the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for men and women, couples and singles, for healthy relationships, to create and be in healthy relationships. I'm also an inspirational speaker and a relationship and love expert, helping women create balance in love, life and business. Thanks for the love, Jermaine. I appreciate that. Good to see you in my broadcast. And by the way, this is a Facebook Live, which is why somebody's commenting. You can't see who they are <laughs> if, you're, if you're watching somewhere else. And I'll give you the links about that at the back end. Okay, where was I? Oh, yes. I'm a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which informs my work with women and my work with women. I also what inspired these talks over two years ago called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. So today we're episode number 799. Yeah, quite a few of these. And the topic today is actually a continuation from yesterday, hence the name part two, about ball busting. So I'll give you a quick Cliff Notes version of yesterday's so you don't have to go back and watch yesterday's unless you want to watch the whole thing. Actually, I'll give you Cliff Notes about one part of it. But I advise you to watch the whole thing because there's some deep stuff in there about how men and women can be more functional together and how men can actually help women um, unpack, detach from, turn off the ball busting aspect. So I'll give you a Cliff Notes version of part of that, and then I'll talk about today's because this is a piece that downloaded to me right after I got off the phone, off the video yesterday, and I thought I need to talk about this. So first of all, recap yesterday briefly. For a lot of women, for a lot of women in the Western world, especially, ball busting is a side effect of the need for women, for you women, to be um, successful in the business world. So. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that, Jermaine. Um, the basically being success in the business world require you to be in your masculine like the men and you have to fight for that leadership role and be a champion and many other things too. And But it basically put you in a place where your dating life would, gener would generally not work the way you wanted because you'd be ball busting the men because you did it in works, you do it in play as well. So that, that's the very brief cliff notes of yesterday's talk. And again, recommend watching the whole thing because I went into much more detail explaining it um, dissecting it, sort of kind of disassembling it is probably a better way of putting it and hoping you get some clarity about how to turn that off, how to get away from it and how to be successful without doing the ball busting as well in love and life. So today I want to speak to, speak to different aspects of the ball busting which is the piece that I forgot about yesterday because it wasn't in my download about one of the other reasons why ladies you are such a ball buster in your life perhaps. Now if you now not women, not all women are ball busters let me be clear but for the women who are, listen up, because this may give you a key to unlock being free. I'm just thinking I don't want to, I don't want to attack it. <laughs> let, me just call, let me put it on the table. Um, another way that women particularly become ball busters is because of their family upbringing. There, I've said it, I'll put it on the table, it's your family. Not their fault, but it's the environment you learned it from. So let me give you some reasons behind that. Which one to go? Oh, sorry, it's, it's hitting me fast. So I'm like, download which one to go first. Okay, this one. So, as a kid, lady, ladies, as girls, you may have been a tomboy growing up. And before you jump down my throat about tomboys being good or bad, I'm not talking about all tomboys, but being a tomboy required, I should say, being a tomboy um, enabled you to be like equal footing with the boys. For most girls, it did that. I know I grew up with a couple of girls like that, so it reminded me of this. And so, to function, you'd have to be like the boys. And that behavior, that alignment, that parallel, basically stuck into your adult life. So being safe around the boys, being accepted by the boys was kind of what you, what girls did oftentimes if they weren't around other, a lot of other girls. You know, in fact, some girls, even when they're around a lot of other girls, felt safer and more comfortable around the boys because they had more of a rough and tumble energy, you know, climbing trees, doing stuff that the boys did, which was supposed to be the rules about girls didn't do that, you know, 
Let's go back a bit. That's not so bad nowadays, but still, that was there. But even deeper than that, for a lot of girls in their childhood, is their family dynamics they grew up with. For some girls, not all, but for some girls in the family, it was the way their father was that I'm going to break, try and break, I'm trying to clarify this in a way that makes sense because it's it can, it, there's multiple aspects of what, how relationship with hang on, say this another way. The relationship you have with your father has many, many, many different aspects. Let me be clear about that. But one of the aspects for some girls in relationship to their father was there was a yearning to be so much like him to basically almost mimic him, so you'd be accepted. Again, not all girls, but for some girls, this is what girls went through. So they wanted, they had basically planted a seed in their own consciousness when they were very young, like, I want to do what he's doing so I can be accepted by him. And that became a way that you actually became an adult and then took it into your business world. Another piece of that, slide, another sliver, another aspect of the same thing is with your uncles and or siblings, brothers. I mentioned earlier about the tomboy aspect. Well, for a lot of girls in some families, they were raised to almost feel like unless they were like the boys they were less than because the way the parents looked at them i'm going back probably 40 years now at least but for families of that when kid, when, when girls were younger that age 40 years ago 50 years ago even and longer sometimes the family looked at girls as being weaker or less than or less desirable than the boys so for some girls what they would do is they would actually have to do the best they could to be a tomboy, to be equal to, to prove themselves competitively with the boys, all the masculine traits. And so that behavior, that programming, that belief system that went in, perpetuated into their adult life, again, as I mentioned the other ones, all these different threads that led them to basically carry forward into their adult life the same way of being to best compete, win, and defeat the boys. And then in adult life, to do the same thing to the men, be a ball buster that way. And I'm using that term as a, I mean, it's basically it's meant to be a catchy title, but the reality is that for so many women, dating men has been very challenging because they don't know how to disengage that. So I'm gonna reiterate a few things I mentioned yesterday because the same things apply here, but I wanted to make sure you get this understanding that for quite a few women, the ball busting training happened in childhood from their family upbringing and from the, and from the neighborhood kids, so to speak, the, the friends. Again, not all women, just some of the women who go through that. So as an adult woman, and I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna recap some things from yesterday because it fits the same thing. To disengage, well, maybe not. There's a couple other pieces showing up. Okay, <laughs> excuse me while I start arguing with myself. <laughs> this happens, by the way. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, or you do see them, I tend to download stuff and stuff comes through and sometimes I get it clearly and sometimes I actually go, am I sure about that? And I have to have an argument with myself. So let me roll this out and see where it goes. <laughs> Bear with me. So, so part of the, par the the paradigm, the challenge with women face as an the women face as an adult in the business world is they get rewarded to a degree to be in that ball busting energy because when they beat up the men and prove themselves stronger, more effective, more successful, and more masculine than men, they get rewarded for that because the culture is built that way. As I mentioned yesterday, the business world was built by men for men. Women have been trying to fit in ever since, and that still plays out. I'm a proponent of women taking leadership in business that is the feminine way, but that's a whole other conversation which I hinted at yesterday. I'm not going to talk about it today. At least I don't think so. So having taken your childhood training, your childhood belief structure, your childhood um, learnings into adult life, the wiring you're carrying is still running itself through subconsciously, because I've talked about this many times before about how we learn as a child becomes imprinted and you wear, you wear as an adult subconsciously. So the behavior of being a ball buster to compete with the men to think like you're a man in some ways still perpetuates. But it's not something you're consciously aware of, but it gets in the way when it comes to romance. It gets in the way when it comes to self-care and self-support because for many women who live that way, they feel so drained because they're doing masculine energetics in a, fem in a feminine body or a feminine co uh, polarity and it's draining them. So part of this shift that I'm encouraging you to look at if you are one of these women is for your own health, not just for your relationship success, but for your own health as well, to really understand that when you can disengage from the ball buster label I'm using, but the male way of being, masculine way of being, macho way of being, you then have room to expand, open up and allow your feminine to flow and to be expressed, which gives you more ability to restore yourself and come into much more fullness and to give yourself back to yourself. 
Part of that from the childhood path that I mentioned is to do some reprogramming and to do some un unprogramming, so to speak, of changing some of those childhood programs that no longer affect you because they're still running. I mean, that's the thing I was saying about all of us. So let's, let me just make a, a broad statement about everybody on the planet, <laughs> just for the fun of it. We all, as adults, tend to run our childhood programming until we know different. Like, duh. But the thing about that piece is that can be good or bad depending on what our childhood programming was. And what I mean by childhood programming is what we learn as kids that we sublimate into our subconscious and then as an adult we play it out with our thinking. So in this context, I'm speaking about the ball busting energetic that women have been taking on. It's one of many different things that people take on as beliefs and programs from their childhood. So some things I'm talking about here, I'm going to talk about, will help you no matter what it is you're running as a default wired program in the background as an adult, this will still apply. This is some of the work I do with my clients. I'm giving you a, 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 um, a sneak peek, so to speak, and more of a Cliff Notes version of what I do because I couldn't coach you all through this app directly in the period of time I'm making available for this talk. <clears throat> Excuse me, but I'm gonna give you some ideas of how it works. Two things I recommend, basically, is, well, I'll start with the one I know aware of. The requirement, in a sense, is to go back to where the programming was written and to rewrite the program, as simple as the things we're putting it. And it does require some, um, excuse me, <coughs> try to say it clearly, it does require that you do look at your own upbringing, your own childhood, your own experience when you're very young, as best you can, because some people don't have memories before the age of 10 even, let alone four or five, so that you can see where you took on beliefs that were the best you knew how to do. None of this is bad, by the way. It may be having bad results or, or less than effective results, but what happened when you were a child, in a sense, the programs you took on were, were usually about either safety or defense or success, some combination of those that we take on because we believe that's the way to do things. And again, as it's taken on at a very young age, four or five years old, we're not, we're not running an adult, um, um, what's we're looking for? We're not running an adult, um, logical mind on this. It's what's coming in reflexively and intuitively. Well, not even intuitively, but emotionally is probably a better way of putting it. So those beliefs that run in our system, again, as subconscious programming, wiring, running around background without us even being aware of it, are gonna keep putting us into the place we're being in. So if you wanna change that process, if you wanna change your behavior and no longer be the ball buster in this context or whatever it is you're not working, this is the way to it, is to go back to your childhood and change the programming. Now how that's done is oftentimes, well, it's very dependent on the situation and the client because sometimes the memory's not there or not conscious because it's traumatic. Sometimes it's easy to get into, which is great. Whatever way it is, having a place where you can get to have a dialogue, a communication, a connection, an actual um, embrace of your adult with your inner child is one of the biggest ways I use to work with my clients because the simplicity of that is the most powerful way I know of doing it. Yes, there are ways you can do it with, with, with hypnotherapy and NLP can do some of this, but the emotional piece that's in there from your childhood keeps running. It's an instilled, embedded, and influential program that keeps running until you go back and rewrite the program. Because the truth is, we as human beings will always run programs in our consciousness because it's how we function. The subconscious mind is our um, deck of programs we get to choose from and use from all the time. Sometimes it's conscious, but most of the time it's subconscious. So wouldn't it be good if you actually set up your programs the way, run the way you want? Now I used to be a computer programmer, so this makes a lot of sense. Maybe using too much of an analogy for this, but I do used to program, I actually helped create Y2K. Yes, I'm one of the people to blame for that. Um, wasn't as bad as we thought, but I was a computer programmer back in the 70s and 80s. Yes, even the late 70s at college. I'm now dating myself. <laughs> so my Understanding of how this works is that when programs create bad results or create results that aren't the ideal result, then you go back and change the program to get the result you want. The same thing is true in our consciousness because in some ways our subconscious mind is like a computer. It's programmed by what we put in when we're very young. So when you get to go back and change the wiring, and it's not, not wiring, excuse me, I keep using the wiring term. In this context, you change the program, change the code. There you go, change the coding, that sounds more aligned to programming. Then we can actually have a different result as an adult. So here's the thing, you can only tell how well your program is running and how effective your program is running by the results you're getting as an adult. If the programs you get, if the results, excuse me, the results you're getting as an adult 
aren't what you want, it's quite likely, not always, but quite likely an, an, a direct result of the programming that you've got installed. So again, if you want to change the results you're getting, change the programming that started it. This is a context, by the way, of emotional baggage, particularly about history and how things play out in your emotional love life, especially. Some things aren't based on this, but this piece I know is definitely is. So again, to disengage the ball buster um, expression, <laughs> so to speak, from your awareness, is to go back to where the program started to put it in place. And by taking the program and rewriting it, the ball buster will actually disappear. It takes a bit of effort, I understand. And there are different courses you can take. There are books you can read, probably. I don't know all the books. And in my coaching, that's what I do with my clients. It's something that you can actually have transformed if you're willing to do the work yourself. So if you don't mind and everything's going great, keep going. But if you do really get clear that you want to change what you've carried around since you were a child, so you have more success than an adult, we should talk. And I'm being biased because this is my broadcast, so I'll talk the way I want to, and I choose to. But I hope you understand from yesterday and today, there's a couple of ways that I'm aware of very clearly how the ball buster energetic, just to get back to the original topic, is inspired by certain things, either to compete and succeed in the business world because you're driven to win that way, or because you were wired from a childhood age to be that way as a child, which you carried into an adult life. <clears throat> These, I think, are the two main reasons why women have become ball busters. Just had a third one show up. Let me see if that fits. <laughs> I love it when things show up this way. I have a suspicion, this may not be accurate, but let me play it out and see where it goes. And a third possibility for the ball buster energetic is for women who have had extremely dysfunctional relationships as an adult. Does that feel right? It's kind of mesh in mesh because I know that for some women that they've become ball busters around men and they basically pun they, they punish the men they date because of past bad relationships with other men. So I know that there's a, vis there's a visiting of the wrath from a previous relationship that you then punish the next relationship with. So that does happen. I wouldn't necessarily say it was birth there. That I think just simply flares up what's already in there. So I think it still comes back to childhood upbringing and the competitive business world aspect that is inspiring women to live that way just to succeed in the business world. Either way, it isn't effective. So ladies, if you're a woman who has been in that role where you've basically been belittling men, making men secondary or letting men be secondary, because I know I did that in my past relationships as a man in that relationship, plural, then to change how you approach this is the key. I'll put links in the comments for you to reach out and get some help if you want. So I'm gonna put in the link in the comments three links. Before I do that, yeah, before I do that, to summarize this, I don't know if there's another part to add to this yet, so I'm not sure if I'll do this again tomorrow. So let me just talk about what you can find on what my broadcast tomorrow because I do this every day. This is my daily Facebook Live that I do on my personal page on Facebook, which is uh, Barry Selby is my personal page. If you're watching here for the first time, thank you. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, now you're watching it, great. If you're watching the replays, you'll find them on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author, and on my YouTube channel, which I invite you to subscribe to, which is Barry Selby, as all my social media is. And the playlist is Messages from the Masculine. We can watch all of them in sequence from newest to oldest or scan through, find a title. The links I'm gonna put in the comments for you to check out if this appeals to you or if you're feeling the wounds and you wanna get help. Uh, one is a discovery session with me because that's where we can start. It's a complimentary clarity conversation, as I call it, a gift from me to you. Secondly, um, I'll put my book in the comments. And thirdly, because sometimes this unearths a whole level of lack of love for yourself. It is such a challenge sometimes because so many women I know don't know how to love themselves because they're so busy doing, doing, doing instead of being with themselves. So as a little nudge, I'll put my self-love guided meditation in the comments as well. So it's three things in the comments for you to look at and check out for yourself. Um, I haven't seen any questions, comments, so I guess this is making sense. If it's landed for you, great, I appreciate that. If you do have any questions or thoughts or concerns, please put them in the comments below. The, the, the clarity conversation is for women only, so if men want help, I'll just message me over social media or however you reach me through, either wherever you see the broadcast. Um, this is big stuff, I know, for a lot of people, for men and women. I talked yesterday about how men can help women move that shift. I do recommend watching yesterday's broadcast. I'll put, if, I remember correctly, if I remember, I'll put the link to that in the comments so you can check it out as well. Because that dived into how men can actually support women in being their feminine. That was a bigger piece. Um, this is more of a PS, so to speak. So I thank you for watching as always. Again, links will be in the comments after I sign off. 
I invite you to check out my op offerings and invitations and also check out my other broadcasts. I thank you for watching. As always, I appreciate you being with me and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. Take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon.